concerns of uh, tapering QE impacting gold prices? Well, look, I think that's been one of the one of the significant influences recently, certainly in terms of uh, the volatility of gold prices, the volatility of currencies uh, and so on uh, around the world. So a tapering off of, uh, of QE uh, seems to have already been uh, factored into the gold price, you say. People are expecting it. People are expecting some form of uh, tapering. Uh, and under those circumstances, I believe it's already factored in. Our view about gold is, is perfectly clear. In other words, it's got a lot of demand factors uh, on it. Uh, it's, got a, it's, it's underwritten in terms of its uh, floor because of the strong physical demand uh, and, and weak physical supply. What is your outlook on silver, which seems to be performing better than gold? Yes, well, silver is also a, a, a wonderful precious metal, uh, and it tends to go with gold uh, in terms of price movements and so on, and, and tends to lag gold uh, somewhat. If, if gold goes up quickly, then silver will, will ultimately uh, catch up. People will swap from gold into silver uh, and so on. Of course, silver's got a greater... Uh, a greater componentry of its demand for uh, industrial purposes, for photography and, and various other uh, electronics and, and the various other things apart from jewellery, of course. So it, it's well and truly underwritten uh, by strong physical demand, silver. Supply factors for silver, uh, it's a little bit more abundant in the Earth's surface than, than gold is, uh, and it tends to come not only with gold, but it also comes with zinc and lead and other uh, other minerals. So it tends to be uh, a greater supply of silver uh, certainly than gold. But look, I would say the outlook for silver uh, is, is almost as good as gold. And finally, what is your outlook on gold prices with a two to four year perspective? Yes, well, we think uh, the outlook for gold uh, in terms of the, the longer term, if you like, the medium to longer term, two years, five years, ten years, uh, is quite strong because the fundamentals are excellent. De uh, gold demand, gold is, is required for lots and lots of different reasons, whether it's for jewellery, uh, a commodity, a currency, a store of value, uh, it's a hedge, it's, it's all of those things. So the demand factors for gold will continue to remain strong, we believe, for, uh, for decades, if you like, but certainly for the next uh, several years. Uh, it's the supply side that is actually the weakest part uh, of the whole gold equation. New gold, as I say, new discoveries, gold is hard to find. The production of gold has been very flat now for a number of years from the new mines uh, and is not expected to increase. What's happening right now? You're seeing, you're seeing cutbacks in production, you're seeing cutbacks in cost, you're seeing cutbacks in exploration, cutbacks in new expansions, new projects, acquisitions and so on. And all of that uh, will factor in over the next several years uh, into a very flat scenario for the supply of gold. So you've got demand increasing, demand in the ascendancy, uh, and you've got supply very flat. So we believe there's only one thing can happen under those circumstances that's going to put a lot of tension uh, on the price. It will behave in a volatile way, but we think the only way is up.